Greetings wonderful people, my name is Juan and starting from September-ish I've been trying to figure out how to use Unity. At around that time I shipped my previous project, Grizzland, and I decided to completely shift the way I develop games. After around 3500 hours spent in GameMaker I'm going to use Unity and C Sharp for my next project. I'll also move from pixel art to hand-drawn style and from synthesized synthesis. Okay, from weird computer-generated wave buzz to sounds recorded in real life, such as those magnificent examples. In a nutshell, I have a lot of skills to cover and that's why I haven't released a new game yet, though I am working on some prototypes at the moment. Recently, however, this channel appeared out of nowhere. Like a thunder during a sunny day, like a fly in your pumpkin soup, like, well, you get the point. And this project was exactly the spark that I needed to start working on a game that can be played from start to finish, even if it is just a very raw mini game. I wanted to make it within two days, and I even deprived myself of sleep on day two because I thought I'd finish it that day, but it turned out to be a week long project, and here's why. Before I start, I want to mention that I've finished a Unity course by Rick Davidson and Ben Tristam, which is an awesome course by the way, and I've read a book on C-Sharp called C-Sharp Yellow Book. So let me begin. In my opinion, Unity is clunky. And that's probably the least of problems there are for someone who sees it for the first time, but it is a big problem nonetheless. I just knew that certain things were in the engine, but I didn't know where to find them. Problem number two, in-game UI, camera, and pixels versus world units. I don't get why everything is flipping and flopping around the screen, and why does it stay this way if you change the pivot afterwards, instead of snapping back to the original state that you put it in, I just don't get it, yet. I found out that you can use TextMesh Pro instead of Unity UI, and I hope that I won't ever have to use the latter one. Another thing is that in Game Maker, if you want the game to fit a 600 by 400 pixels resolution, you just write the code using those exact numbers and bam, you're done. For whatever reason, I've been searching for months to get a solution and ended up with something like that, which was slightly infuriating. I managed to fix that problem, but not really to an extent I'd prefer to see, so that's still a question for me to resolve for future projects. The same pixels apply to physics and generally to the positions of things on the screen in Game Maker. You don't use some imaginary world units, but instead you can be pixel perfect in where stuff you add to the game will be placed. Number 3. Assets. In the modern world, the question is shifting from do you know how to do this yourself to do you know which code snippet to use to make it work. It allows for much faster production, but I've always been a fan of writing the code myself. I truly like the feeling of being in charge of what I'm doing with my life. I used to write my own particles, camera movements, physics, etc. And that's what I love my Game Maker experience for. However, there really is no point in writing your own Cinemachine, TextMesh Pro or completely new particle systems in Unity. These are the default things that you need to rely on to control camera movement, make text displays better and spawn particles efficiently in the current state of Unity. Number 4. Unity Engine itself. Well, that's an obvious one and I don't really know why is it so low on my list, but I don't know any best practices and many things will come only with trial and error. For example, I wanted to t detect all of the item collisions in my point and click game from the mouse position. Like, I wanted to detect which item you are hovering over and how I'll change the cursor and what you can do with that item from the cursor itself. And as far as I understand, one of the ways would be to cast rays from the cursor, but I don't know how to do that, so after hours of trying various dumb methods I realized that I was wasting too much time for a project restrained in time and I decided to detect collisions from objects themselves, for now. And those four points are just a small part of all the troubles I faced while developing the Grandma's recipe. 
And a sane question would be, Iwan, why did you move to Unity then? Well, the first reason is that Game Maker Studio is no longer supported. You won't even find it on the store if you search for it. GMS is a wonderful tool and it's extremely good for beginners. It's just amazing, I don't have anything else to say. GMS 2, however, is just a piece of software that I have to use, unfortunately, but I really don't ever look forward to opening it. And I'm not trying to say that it's bad, it just doesn't fit my purposes and I feel like it's very counterintuitive and filled with dozens of overwhelming and useless features. Reason number 2. C Sharp is beautiful. Maybe I wouldn't say that before completing the course and reading the book, but now I'm in love with this language. And I was really looking forward to finally working in Unity because I missed some of the basic functions it offers back when I was working in Game Maker 1. Number 3. It may sound very dumb, but I wanted to use Unity because of the way it handles errors. Unlike Game Maker, it won't crash my games when I make any minor mistake and it will keep running instead. Again, there are many more reasons to use Unity, but I don't really want to bore you with my speech anymore. If you are somehow not asleep yet, please consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.